Our third and the last speaker will be Talal. He's doing assignment number two from Pathways Program. The objectives of, of his speech are to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback, and then apply feedback to a second speech. The speech will last between five and seven minutes, and the title of Talal's speech is A Step Into the Unknown. With his speech entitled A Step Into the Unknown, please welcome Talal. There's a quote that says, to step into the unknown is the only way to expand what is known. And I think that's very true because unless you step out of your comfort zone, you never will know what you're really, truly capable of. And that's something I've had to do very recently. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Have you ever felt stuck? or stagnant, or even frustrated with where you are, because you're not getting the results. That's how I've been feeling lately. And it's not the first time I actually felt like this. A couple of years ago, I was actually in a similar sort of place, where I was feeling down, feeling stuck, feeling stagnant, definitely frustrated, because I wasn't getting the answers that I wanted. But then, one day, I was sitting down on my dining table, working on my laptop, and I came across a quote, which said that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I want you to think about, if you were me in that situation, what would you have done when you came across that quote? I know what I did. I stopped what I was doing, I grabbed a piece of paper, I grabbed a pen, and I made a list of the five people I spend the most time with. I looked at the list and I realized that they're all people I care about, I love, and I'm grateful to have in my life. But, they're not where I want to be. So I cannot go to them to ask for the answers that I need. And at that point, I made a commitment to myself that I am going to spend time and energy and I'm going to upgrade my network. So since then, I have spent a great deal of time and energy upgrading my network. And I've had the honor and the opportunity to connect with some really amazing people, with top podcasters, with best-selling authors, with top influencers and top thought leaders. And as a result, I have grown But, sometimes you hit a plateau. That's what happened with me. So fast forward to the very recent past, where I was feeling the same, I was feeling stuck, I was feeling stagnant, I was feeling frustrated. But this time, things were different. I had spent a lot of time upgrading the network and building a support network around me. And one of my very good friends, William, who's a very, very high-level transformation coach, reached out to me and he said, look, I want to jump on a call with you. I want to talk to you about what you're going through. And he did. And during the call, he helped me with two things. One, clarity. Second, growth. Now, I have to tell you, William is a beast. This guy is a very high-level transformation coach, and he only works with very high-level people. He's on track this year to make two million. So you can see what kind of level he's at. So he spent some time with me, and towards the end of the call, he actually challenged me. He really challenged me, and he asked me, what do you need to do right now to grow? And I responded with this face, because I have no idea. Who knows? So at that point, he further challenged me. He said, who are you helping? in order to make sure that you grow yourself. And that hit me. And at that point, ladies and gentlemen, I was a statue frozen in time.
And what happened next was that the light bulb usually that goes off, it actually exploded because I realized I actually do need to go out and help others in their journeys if I need to go myself. That's exactly what I did. Spent some time racking my brains, made some notes on who is the kind of person that I can mentor, that I can help. And I also made a list of the kind of people who kind of fit those sort of criteria. I reached out to two of them, we jumped on a call, I explained to them what I had in mind, and they were up for it. And since then, I've been helping them. Now, one of them is a very high level life coach. The other one, well, I can't really think of the words to describe what she does because she's just at another level. So, I have been kind of helping them expand and, and work on different things. Now, what happened was that in this little period of time that we've been working together, we accomplished a lot. We really did. The life coach managed to expand her business to two new countries. And the other person, she is, well, we're going through strategies at the moment on how she can get in front of Reese Witherspoon with what she's launching at the moment. How many people know Reese Witherspoon, the actress? Awesome. So, the one thing I have to tell you guys that I didn't mention before was that William challenged me to help them for free. So I've been helping them for absolutely free. But I did that for my own growth. So now, at this stage where I am, I've stepped into the unknown. I've never done anything like this where I've actually kind of mentored somebody or helped somebody out with their issues, with their personal things that really helped them accelerate. But William saw something in me and he said, you have a lot to offer. And I had to put back my limiting beliefs and step forward and venture into the unknown to see what I'm really, truly capable of. And now, I'm going to extend that challenge to you. Do you know what you need to do next in order to grow? Do you know who you need to help in order to grow yourself? And are you willing to make the sacrifice in order to make sure that you do achieve that level of growth. And you might be thinking there, saying, hey, this is kind of new to me. I'm in the same boat. This is very new to me. I've never done anything like this. But I took on the challenge. And you know what it feels like? It feels like I'm a new star who's shown for the first time into the abyss of space. Thank you. Please welcome Peter. <laughs> Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. I have the privilege of evaluating Talal's speech. Talal started with a quote which has already been mentioned in the you know, previous evaluations is a great way to start as it draws draws the audience in. Um, he started with a quote about stepping out of your comfort zone, which was probably the main theme running through his speech. He followed it up um, shortly afterwards with a second quote uh, uh, about um, you are the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with which I think is a Jim Rohn quote, if I remember correctly. And from the start, Talal St. Drew is in. He, he made great use of gestures, and he used the stage well. He moved from side to side at the start, and then I thought he, he did an excellent thing by using the chair as a prop. And again, that, that drew, us, drew us all in. He whilst talking about the, the five people that um, he realised he spent his time, time with, he, he counted with his, with his arms and with his gestures, one, two, three, four, five. Um, he's, he's a speaker that you can't ignore because he's got a very powerful voice and he makes great use of voice modulation and he projects his voice very well so he can be clearly heard at the back, back of the room and he at times raised his voice to emphasise his points. 
and his, his gestures throughout were congruent with, with his actual words. He also, throughout his speech, he used the power of three. He talked about how, when he analysed how, he's, how he's, he felt, um, he, he used the power of three. Uh, he, felt, he said he felt stuck, stagnated and frustrated. Um, those are the three words he used to describe his feelings. He also made very good eye contact, looking around the room as if he was speaking to each of us in turn. Um, he used a, a very good metaphor, statue frozen in time, and some very good um, descriptive words which brought his speech, speech to life. He asked me to um, look at the quality of his delivery, the quality of the message and the engagement with the audience and the emotional response of the audience. And I thought he achieved all of those really well. His speech was well structured, had a good middle, end and conclusion. I'm on the red light, so I'll skip on. Um, the only point I would make that he could perhaps improve was once or twice he looked down, which I think broke rapport with the audience, but throughout he had, other than that, he had excellent rapport. I think he met, met, well, he met all of the objectives set for the speech. I suppose we'll say. Thank you, Peter.